Okay, well, hey neighbors, welcome to the shed shop and this late night edition of Doctor Diagnostics. It's almost midnight on my day off, but since I've had so many damn days off because of my miserable pain lately, uh, the past two Saturdays I have worked because I've not worked the rest of the week for the most part. I worked a couple days this week. I did a lot of doctor's appointments and all kinds of other bullshit, but I'm mostly laid in bed, miserable. That being said, that's why the steel 028 I built like a month, month and a half ago. Uh, all I did was tear the saw down and replace all the stuff that needed to replace. The ring gap was amazing. The cylinder looked amazing. Piston looked amazing. Um, and so I just did the basic stuff it needed to do and cleaned it and replaced all the rubbers and whatnot. Uh, but this saw won't idle. So real quick, let me show you real quick. Click the, the thumbs up. That's what I was saying. Uh, go over next and then click subscribe, the bell, and then be sure when it comes up. It'll give you personalized, all, or none. Make sure you click on all. If you click on none, you're an asshole. You can click on personalized if you really don't want all my content coming across your phone. But you should click on all because YouTube doesn't know you. They just make you think they know you with their algorithms. They don't know you, neighbor. I know you, neighbor. We're personal here. So I'll show you what it's doing. And then uh, I have tried several different carburetors on this. I've removed the restrictors from carburetors. Uh, it literally could be. Sometimes, you guys, I just have to wait a few days on certain saws. And then they'll fire up and they won't do what they were doing before. Well, hell, you need to see the door. Because I don't want to hook on tunes. Oh, well, hell, now she doesn't even start. I'll be damned neighbors. Okay, well this saw this saw started before it just didn't idle it refused to idle okay so what we have to do no you know what i might have replaced the rings on this i wish i could damn remember uh yeah new cable rings i did so i replaced the rings on this so they do need seated but this saw won't idle so we're literally going to start with the diagnostics okay and uh that literally i'm going right right to pulling the muffler Does my piston still look okay that's the first thing I need to know. And if it does, we'll put a, a rubber block behind the muffler. And then we'll do the same. Uh, we'll uh, put a flange where our carburetor is, a test flange. And we will do a vacuum pressure test. Okay, uh, if you're new to the channel, I had some gray uh, Permatex Moto Seal base uh, gasket maker. And last year we had severe deep freeze. And I had a case of the stuff sitting out here. And I think some of it went bad. So I'm not using any of it anymore. Um, unless it's just like white trash stuff around my house that I'm just trying to patch something together temporarily. That's about all I'm using it for. But it will no longer be going on any of the chainsaws that I desire to sell. I might use it on some of mine. Uh, just to find out if that really is what's going on. But we're using... Uh, Honda Bond now, which is very similar to Yama Bond, uh, but from what I'm reading from other guys, I've never used the Yama Bond. I've never used the Honda Bond until now, or the Honda Bond. But most guys say they they seem the identical, except that the Honda Bond is slightly. What is going on there? We have like a very thick, thick, thick uh, film here. It's really weird. Okay, our piston looks fine. Uh, the compression is strong. It's really weird why this saw won't fire off. You can see this is this is normal for a rich running saw, but it's really thick, extremely thick, and I'm not sure why it's like that. So I'm gonna turn you down to the bench, and we're gonna go ahead and vacuum pressure test this saw, see if we have an air leak, and if we don't. Uh, we'll start looking other places. We'll check our uh, pickup body and make sure we didn't get a defective pickup body. Uh, make sure we actually changed it. We will vacuum pressure test our, uh, I'm sorry, we will, yes, vacuum pressure test our fuel line to make sure it passes. Uh, we will pressure test our carburetor to see if it has air leaks. Uh, we will check our spark plug and we will start checking various things and until we find something wrong. And if we don't find anything obvious wrong, well, then the video is going to end and Chase Our Redeemer is going to hang this bitch back on a hook and we'll think some more until I have time to get to it again. Again, you guys, I am always so very sorry that I have to all the time and that I don't edit it out for you. It's my pain. I have pain back here and it literally feels like my spine has curved and it's just jabbing me in the throat 
and also my muscles are like ripping on my lungs plus crushing my lungs at the same time if that makes any sense my muscles on the left are fighting with my muscles on the right to protect everything around them and it's not going well for my spine okay and for everything else uh that is tied to my muscles so shall we turn down to the bench neighbors as you guys know on this channel also i don't get paid for chit about what i say about products uh, and if I do in the future, I'll let you know it's a sponsor, but I will never, ever, ever sponsor any product I don't like. Uh, I don't get paid, but these things, just like the igloos, uh, I, I inherited this with a vehicle I bought. This thermo flask, man, I'll tell you what, this water was put in here this morning. And I can tell you right now, as long as I keep the cap closed, even though it's chilly outside, even on a 100 degree day, leaving this in the sun, that water will stay cold for a few hours. And on an average temperature day in the 80s or so, uh, in the sun, this will stay cool all day, and if it's in the shade, it will stay cold all day. Sorry, Adam Hayes, no shirtless water this time. Uh, it's cold outside. I've got the door open to keep the fresh air coming in. All right, so I've got a muffler taken off, and I have a rubber that is cut out specifically for this saw. We will grab that one out if I can find it. Here it is. As you can see, it's cut the same shape as our muffler gasket. We do remove the muffler gasket typically when we do. Yeah, this is so thick. It, it's really interesting to me that it's that slimy. Okay, and I, I am sitting here wondering. I know I didn't do. Uh, I just did uh, high speed oil on the bearings on this. I didn't do any grease. Um, I don't know why it's so thick like that. I'll have to check my fuel. And like I said, we're just, we're just going to start start with the the uh very first thing is like i'm like okay i've tried a couple different carburetors and i get the same symptoms so it's unlikely that it's the carburetor because i've used a carburetor that i know is good um and had the same symptoms uh you can see i did a different little uh port on this aftermarket muffler and i'm gonna go ahead and do a dual port on the top and i'll have a spark screen on the top but no spark screen here unless you're in idaho and then I guess we have to put a spark screen on so the popo don't arrest you. Okay, because the government likes to tell us what to do, even though our constitution says, fuck you, government. You don't get to tell us what to do. We tell you what the hell to do. And then if we don't like you and we think you're corrupt, it's our right to alter or abolish you. You guys know that's what the constitution says. It's your right to abolish and alter your government. But yet everybody's bad <laughs> letting the government and, and the big corporations like this YouTube control. Sorry, YouTube. Please don't shut my channel down. Uh, I don't like YouTube. I just think you guys are too damn liberal, too dirty and filthy. And you violate the Constitution and don't allow, don't allow me my freedom of speech and freedom of expression like you say you support. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and take our air filter cover off. Uh, two flathead collar screws that uh, screw onto our carb studs. To get our air filter off make sure those are unscrewed all the way and it should come right off set that aside somewhere that's not going to get filthy dirty vile and disgusting well we're going to go ahead and remove our whole carburetor but what you want to do is loosen your fuel cap i am looking at my tank vent and i am wondering uh i have a aftermarket tank vent and those usually work fine on this model my fuel smells fine um while we're here, I'll go ahead and pull out my, whoops, where's my hook? I'll go ahead and pull out my pickup body uh, and examine it, but I do believe it's brand new. And actually surprising, my, my fuel line feels kind of stiff. Uh, I thought I replaced it. And yeah, I did do the large pickup body in this. It is brand new. Uh, yeah, it's brand new. I, I highly doubt it's the pickup line. I really doubt it's the fuel line either. Because even though it feels slightly stiff, the, the thing is, a fuel line has to balloon or collapse typically for it to be the problem. And I don't think that one will do that. Okay, so now, uh, real quick, I'm going to go ahead and get our throttle lever out of the way. So in, in avoidance of spilling fuel, I'll do that. For your throttle lever, what you want to do is pull your trigger, okay, and pop this off right there. And then turn it. You just turn it and it will unhook from your carburetor. And then set that aside. Next, it is really easier. You don't have to get this out of the way, but it's easier if you want. You can pop that out. Uh, now, turn your saw on the side. And if you have, if you don't want to drain your fuel, 
Turn it on the side. Uh, push this carburetor grommet out of the way. Okay. Right there. You don't have to get all of that all the way out, but just push it out of the way. And then you can slide your carburetor back. And if you're gimp like me, oh shit, you know what? Sorry, neighbors, did you dirty? You should go ahead and take your 8 mil off first. Okay. That will definitely help you get your carburetor off. You don't have to take your uh, eight mil nuts off to get your carburetor off, but it does help. It sure does help. I miss that guy. Whatever happened to him, damn it. All right. Now that we got that, go ahead and move your carburetor. Uh, you can unhook your fuel line. I have the specialty flange that I'm going to be using to do the vacuum pressure test. Uh, but to make it easier on us, I'm going to go ahead and I don't think this red one will work, but no, it will not. I'm going to go ahead and plug up this fuel line. I really desperately need to find me like a hundred of the pink and black ones of these. Because digging through, I've tried putting them in separate containers. But I use them so frequently, I end up running out. And then I'll dig through looking for them. Uh, they sell these in kits, but you got to buy the whole kit. And I have so many of the big ones. I don't want any more big ones. It's kind of like these things for my pegboard. You can't buy these ones individually. And it pisses me off. Because it's like I have lots of pliers. I don't want to have to buy a 208-piece kit just to get me three of those. That's ridiculous. Can you please sell me those individually, somebody? China neighbors. Okay. Now I can go ahead and seal my gas cap up so my fuel doesn't leak or spill. Uh, I will go ahead and sit down. Uh, now you can leave these or take them out. It varies. I think on this one, the service manual says to leave them in. Um, I cannot recollect, but we'll try it with them in, and if for some reason we have a leak back there, we'll go ahead and remove them. Uh, I'm sorry. I think, uh, let's see. Yeah, I want to remove the center one at least. Okay, that will help. Um, these are, are, are to help our, our intake boot not get deformed uh, long term, and so for a vacuum pressure test, they're not hurting anything. This will help us ensure a better seal, so I will go ahead and remove them. I cannot remember if I have to be on A or B on this. That does look like it will line up. It does. Okay, now go ahead and put our 8 mils back on here. Uh, and now we want these snug, but we don't want to wrench them down ridiculously because we could F up our boot. Okay. We could damage it. We don't want to do that. They're expensive. They're not as expensive on these saws, the 1127 series, but they're not cheap. I am watching the letters on my stuff. I kind of know, for the most part, I don't always get it right, but with an impact, I can get fairly close. And then if I need to check something by hand, I can, okay? I don't want to kill my batteries. Turn that off. We have our Mighty Vac here. Uh, we will hook it up to our flange. And then we will go ahead and pull a vacuum. And if we have a leak, we'll immediately switch to pressure. Uh, and we'll get soapy water. Now on this one, uh, as I've said before, the top handle, certain things get in the way. If we do have a leak and we can't obviously identify at either our flange, our block off, or our spark plug, we end up having to pull more of the saw off to get to our crankshaft seals. Oh, and then our impulse over. So the next thing, if that, if we have a leak and that we can't find it there, we'll pull our recoil. Uh, and then we'll spray our impulse hose and intake boot back there. And if that doesn't present leak, then we'll go ahead and pull our flywheel and check our crankshaft seal. If that doesn't present leak, then we'll pull all this side off to that crankshaft seal. And then we got to find our leak, if we have a leak. So here we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead, neighbors, and we'll go ahead and do vacuum first. We're going to go to either five or seven and a half pounds. I like to go to seven and a half because then I don't have to wait as long. And then we literally... Are just gonna watch this and so so you guys don't have to sit there bored you guys go get your snacks and stuff and i'm gonna watch this for a few minutes get your pop get your alcohol uh get your chips get whatever you need for the rest of the show okay i hope you guys got everything you need because i have something to tell you on vacuum we have a very slow leak down so we'll release our air turn it to pressure we'll go up to seven and a half pounds and we'll go get the soapy water out of the other building uh, while you guys try and go down in the comments and guess, where do you think our air leak is? Is it where we've blocked off our muffler? Is it where we've blocked off this? Is it our impulse hose? Is it our intake boot? Is it our spark plug? Or is it our gray permatex or one of our crankshaft seals? You neighbors go in the comments and tell me while I pump this up the rest of the way and go get the soapy water. Seven and a half pounds, neighbors. You guys watch that while I go get what we need. 
this is my gold bar disguised as silver or, or as i'm sorry as uh what's that cheap shit is it sterling silver is that the cheap shit uh whatever anyways this is dawn dish Ope with water disguised as windex so let's go ahead and start spraying and looking for air bubbles We'll uh, unhook our spark plug boot completely. And it can be hard to see this, but put the spray back there. Don't see any bubbles presenting there. Turn over to this side and spray around our muffler as best we can. But with our top cover on, really, this is can we get lucky and see bubbles? And I just am not seeing any, and I feel like we're going to go ahead and tear this all down. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take our recoil off right now. Got to find a T27 long bit. I know I have some over here. Here we go. I need me, if anybody wants to donate the Chainsaw Redeemer, 1851 Long Distance Road, Lewisburg, damn hiccups, Tennessee, 37091. I need the ones that are about half the length of this. They're like three inches long or two and a half inches. Here's where you can send them, okay? So, let's get our recoil out of there. And this will allow us to see our, our impulse. I'm sorry. Damn, I don't have a, uh, a collar screw in there. We got to make sure we do that. So, let's write ourselves a note. Needs collar screw. Needs great candle slash recoil collar screw. Here we go. Got our note, so hopefully we won't forget that and do our neighbor dirty. All right, we've got our recoil unscrewed, and like I said. Basically, the idea is now we can see a little bit of that stuff. So we can spray that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add some more pressure. Get us back up to about seven and a half, eight pounds. It is a slow leak, which leads me to believe it's probably one of our seals. Uh, I'm still not seeing anything. So we're going to go ahead and pull our flywheel. Loosen that screw. We'll leave it on. Uh, take us a hammer. Uh, do I have my long pliers over here? I don't see them, so I'll just use my regular needle nose. Literally lift the saw up by the flywheel. Tap, and it's loose. And I flung my socket, but my flywheel came off. That's the important part, right? Go ahead and grab our socket here. Sorry, I'm a Squire 240. Can you get out of the way? Uh, somebody, Ted Nitzel, won the 240. I don't know why I said somebody, because we already know who won it. It's Ted Nitzel. Okay, get our flywheel out of the way. Now we have half of our base gasket exposed. Yeah, we are still... Damn, I just let all the air out. We are still leaking uh, at a decent rate. It's a lot faster with pressure than it is vacuum. So let's go ahead and spray all ditch it. There it is. Crankshaft seal. Uh, our Permatex is leaking. There it is. That's why our saw doesn't run right. See? My moto seal is bad, okay? My Pervitex base gasket went bad. I really think the cold weather, the deep freeze we had last winter ruined a couple tubes of my Permatex because some of it's fine, some of it's not. That's why I contacted all my customers uh, that uh, bought saws that were assembled after the deep freeze and told them you have a 100% free diagnostics if your saw starts acting funny at all. I've told them, but you have to bring it in if it starts doing anything weird at all you have to immediately bring it in there's some coffee so that's gonna be it neighbors I have to tear this all the way down and I have to go ahead and redo the base gasket okay I will probably if I can clean them up good enough reuse the crankshaft seals because they're brand new because they're not what's leaking it's the base gasket around them that's leaking okay and that is the other thing a lot of people say that you don't need to permatex uh, around the, the outside of the crankshaft seal. But I think you do, especially on these clamshells, these split pans, whatever you want to call them. Okay, 
Uh, so to get this apart, we'll go ahead and remove our specialty stuff. Uh, we need to uh, pop all these out in order to get our wrap handle off, okay? So you can pop those out with a screwdriver and or pliers or both. I usually use both if you have to. Uh, you can go ahead and remove your sprocket cover here. Set that aside. I'm going to use my parts washer for these parts because the desire is to tear this all completely down. Uh, and then go ahead and rebuild it right back up immediately after I clean the base gasket off. Uh, and we'll use Yama or Honda Bond this time. Okay. So remove that AV mount. And then basically we can go ahead and take all those T27 screws out. Get that handle out of the way. Uh, fortunately, we don't have to take every single thing off of this saw. We don't have to take our chain brake handle apart. Uh, you have like, I think six or seven. I always forget. One, two, three, six, four, yeah, seven, four, five. And then you'll have two that attach it to your top handle, uh, down here. Oh, I'm sorry. In the back here, six, seven. Okay. So, it is unfortunate that I have to keep redoing saws, you guys, but it is just the reality of my life right now. Uh, I'm trying to uh, accept it and cope with it the best I can, but it is frustrating because the bills are due again. And because of my health, I am so far behind, it's ridiculous. Um, I haven't been able to work a lot lately. Um, okay, we need to pop this one out in order to get our handle off, okay? Take that out. We'll go ahead and set all this all blah, 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 blah. We'll set all this stuff aside. I have a little uh this is not gonna be accurate because it was for the 562, but this is just magic marker. So we can uh, spray us a little bit of this car parts cleaner. We'll probably take it off. Okay. I don't have any I need to refill my oh yes I do. I just haven't put it on the holder. Yep, that cleans it off right good. And I know this saw is hardware very well, so I'm not really going to mark it. But I recommend if you don't know the saw you're working on, mark every single piece of hardware and take you tons of pictures. I just know this one. I don't need to mark it. I know it very well. Okay. It has a very limited amount of different size screws. But the newer the saw gets, uh, the more hardware it has. Okay. So now we need to um, remove our wires back here so that we can feed them through. Okay. So we just disconnect that there. Uh, this one pulls through this way. I'm sorry, does it get pushed through? It does. No, wait. No, it comes out this way. Yeah, it does. Okay, so then we can go ahead and push that grommet through. Um, try not to damage it because it does keep dust out. Okay, uh, now we'll pop this one out. Uh, I find I have found a fairly easy way to pop these out if they're not super, super stiff. Uh, get you two uh, small flathead screwdrivers. Okay, here's one. I was hope, hoping for a tuning screwdriver, but put you one in here through the front to create you some space. And then I'm going to use this one in the front because it's long to create you some space, okay? Like so. And then send this one through the back in that space you've created, okay? And the reason you need to create that space is because it'll catch the lip. And then just put this right through to where it ends up being right at the end of that other rubber, but not on the plastic. And then you can literally just pry it, okay? And it will literally pop out, okay? Most times, anyways, I'm almost there. Didn't quite go all the way. I should be able to get through without doing my screwdriver now, okay? There we go. Get that out of there. And then we can remove our impulse boot. Careful not to stab it. I have tons of these, so if I do stab it, we're okay. All right. And then if you go over here, will be the easiest way to grab your impulse line on this one. Uh, pop your impulse line off your cylinder. Okay. And then your handle should be free. Okay. You can twist it up out of the way and remove it like that. Uh, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and get all this stuff over here off. So take your scrunch and use your crankshaft as a prying post and pop that e-clip off but keep your fingers in front of it so it doesn't go flying okay mm. this all redeemer is struggling because this one doesn't want to come off mm. and i'm hurting really bad honestly 
Okay, so pull that off. Pull your retaining washer off. Hopefully. Come on, baby. There you go. Now your sprocket should come off once you disengage your chain brake. Pull your needle cage bearing off. Uh, now we will try one time real quick to pull our clutch uh, without putting a piston stop or rope in. And if that does not work, we will go ahead and do a piston stop with a rope. I am looking for uh, that, um, here, this that I just had, my three-quarter, this is reverse thread, so we're going to go to the right. It did come off, fortunately. Take that off, and then you take your rotor clutch washer off. Okay, take your worm gear out. Okay, you'll have two T27s uh, for your oil pump. Go ahead and remove those. Okay. And then your oil pump has an elbow on it right here that pivots. And so just pop that out. Okay. Pull that elbow back right here. And then uh, you can release it from your line down here. We have permatexted it as insurance. And so it'll take us a little bit extra to get it off because it's sealed on there real nice. But we will get it. Okay. You can go ahead and pull that worm gear. Uh, it just kind of angles out. Okay. Don't lose your screws. There's one. Where'd our other screw go? There's two. We'll put that in our uh, organizer as well. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what else? This does not. None of this goes to the saw. That was all the 064. Uh, we will go ahead and put our flywheel nut in there so we don't lose it. Set our flywheel aside. Uh, now that we've got all that off, neighbors, a lot of times... Uh, if you want the bottom pan off, you do have to remove this stud. I don't usually do it. Sometimes I will, but I don't typically do it unless I absolutely have to because I can reassemble the saw. Go ahead and remove our muffler. Okay, pull that out. Go ahead and get this out of the way. You need to take uh, this bolt off and take this bolt off. This one can be a little difficult because of the shroud. If you can get it off, you want to if not just go ahead and you only have uh two screws to take your shroud off two t27s up here okay they'll be the same size as your uh oil pump screws and your dust cover screws so there is only two sizes of screws on this saw i think maybe three okay there's that go ahead and unhook your spark plug wire there and that shroud well should come off you have to shimmy some things certain times. Okay, there you go. That comes off. Work that off of your boot there. Set that aside. And uh, next, what we need to do is remove our ground wires from our cylinder. That's going to be one T27 screw right there in our cylinder. Okay, I will usually take that one and I'll just put it right back in my cylinder to keep it out of the way and make sure it doesn't get lost. Uh, take all these screws, set them aside. Okay. And then you can leave your coil if you're just doing the base gasket. Okay, now you can remove that bolt. And uh, we'll put those in our organizer as well so we don't lose them. Okay, put those there. We'll set our muffler aside. Uh, we don't need this for the time being. We'll set that up. Get all these rubbers out of our way real quick. We'll get the rubbers out of the way. Uh, there's our muffler gasket. We will put that in our container to keep it safe and out of the way and not getting lost. Um, hang that back up there, neighbors. And then you're going to have four T27s from underneath to get your cylinder off. Now, this one, you will have to push your oil line out of the way. Damn, those are tight. Okay. That one I will have to hand wrench off. Holy shit, that sucker's tight. My battery might be going dead, too. <clears throat> yeah, that bitch is tight. Damn, I can't believe I have that that tight. It is what it is. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and undo that one. Move your oil line out of the way. Pull them all the way out. If you can. That way you know nothing else is grabbing on you still. Okay, there we go. Uh, set those in our container to make sure we don't lose those as well. And now, 
you can go ahead up here, use your scrunch, and uh, you can put your scrunch right there to kind of help you break your seal, okay? Uh, that's not working. I thought there was a tab in the front of this one, but that must be the 250. Oh, uh, yeah, we've got a good seal on there. You're just trying to break the suction is what you're doing, and then that will angle out like, like that, and there we are. So, this Permatex, man, you guys, has just been bad. It's just done me dirty. So, we will remove all of that. Yeah, it it, it, it is. It's I got a bad tube, um, and I do think it was the weather. I don't think it was just I uh, so happened I got a bad tube. I think the cold ruined it. Uh, I don't blame per Permatex at all, in no way, shape, or form, because they do make it very clear in bold letters uh, on the instructions of this that it needs to be stored at a certain temperature. It also talks about installation at certain temperatures and how you need more drying time at colder temperatures and humidity and all that different stuff, and so it's not their fault. So, you guys, please don't think this is a bad product. This is what I'm using. This is this is great for chainsaws, but if it goes bad, it's 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 useless. Any of these brands can go bad. This is good. This is good stuff. I've used it a lot, and I have many successful chainsaws out there with zero issues. Um, but I think I just got a bad tube. Now, I like to just break this crankshaft seal by tapping it with a rubber mallet. It will usually work. Usually. Damn, it's not coming loose. Shocking. <clears throat> yeah, it's on there. I definitely had it sealed good there. Wow. Okay, neighbors, we are stuck. Mm, wow. Oh, my goodness. That is, that is shocking, seriously. Mm, damn. Okay, it started to, there we go, that one got it. Uh, as you can see, everything looks really good. It looks beautiful. This was a really young saw. I just, I don't re remember why I decided to go ahead and re-ring it. Um, it's very clean. I didn't do a ton to clean this saw. It was just naturally a, a very, very, very clean, well taken care of saw. Cylinder still looks just fine. We don't have any issues whatsoever. So, we're very fortunate that we didn't have any issues but that is doctor diagnostics and you got a bonus of a very vast uh disassembly of a steel 029 super so neighbors i always say be kind because everyone's facing a battle this is my battle uh, i have so many saws and it's really it's not my fault it's just bad luck i cannot control my permatex going bad uh, of course uh i could have brought it inside uh and kept it stored in the house um throughout the winter but that is the only way i could be at blame okay um i didn't anticipate two heaters in this little tiny 10 by 12 shed even though it wasn't insulated at the time not keeping this above freezing but we had a freeze uh that it was so bad we were like at 40 below for three days and and that did it it did me in i tried my best to tarp all my important stuff um, but the house was crowded and everything. And so any neighbors that have a saw with this, I'm sorry I did you dirty, okay? But you're covered. Anybody that has this gray Permatex uh, after that freeze, um, before I stopped using it, you're 100% automatically covered on your warranty, okay? Um, even if you don't know how to tune a carb and that voids your warranty, I don't care. If this is the issue, uh, you're 100% covered parts whatever only if you bring the saw to me right away because there's no reason the saw should blow up because of an air leak you should notice your saw's not running right and bring it to me and and remember you guys this stuff's important you know people talk about ah oh, just slap it on ah oh, just put a thin layer ah oh, it doesn't matter ah oh, you don't have to do this you don't have to. nah neighbors because if you don't want to go backwards and if you're rebuilding a saw for a neighbor you should care enough that you want to meticulously make sure their saw is going to run as if they bought it off the shelf, even if it doesn't look like they bought it off the shelf. Okay, that's it. That's the bottom line. That's how we do it here at the Shed Shop. We want to do it right. Sometimes our pain makes us do shit dirty, but we tell you, and then we make it right. Like Adam Hayes, sorry I did you dirty, even though you don't feel I did you dirty, but I sent you a 266SE uh, with a broken recoil spring because I didn't want to take it apart because I hate rewinding springs because it hurts my pain and I don't like doing it and I didn't want to add more parts and I just wanted to send your salt out because I needed space and everything else. I did you dirty, neighbor. Sorry, neighbor. Thanks that you love me enough 
to uh, let me make it rot and to also carry the burden with me and say, hey, you fucked up, but I'll carry the burden with you. You just won't say I fucked up. You just say I'll carry the burden with you. Uh, so he, he even offered to buy the intake manifold because somehow his intake manifold got cracked somewhere in the shipping. And it is common on them saws. Uh, I've asked a guy that has a brand new one that matches the part number, but he's only got pictures of one side and I absolutely need to see the other side to know if it's the right part or not. He's not gotten back to me. So Adam and I are most likely going to buy a used intake on that saw. Uh, neighbors, I want to build this saw back up because now that I know the problem, I see no reason once I reassemble this bitch that she shouldn't run right. We'll let the rings get seated. We'll break it in. And then we're going to have a, a 362, the Nightmare MS361, because Jason bought a 462 and an 880 at a really good price. Uh, we're discussing him turning the uh, uh, 361 back in toward a top handle saw uh, that he wants. And so that will be for sale again if I sell it. I really like that saw. And we took footage today, uh, October 7th, Saturday, which is technically yesterday because it's after midnight in Central Time Zone now. Uh, we took footage of that cutting with a 25 inch. I knew it would 59 CC or not. I knew when I gutted that muffler, I just knew I put a, a meteor piston in it and I knew that bitch. I knew that bitch was running a 25 and it does. Uh, the 362, I like the Mtronic carb that it has on it. However, uh, that salt isn't, isn't, it didn't impress me today. And so I don't know if it was a doll chain. It was Jason's bar and chain from the MS361. And so I don't know, um, if his chain wasn't sharpened enough, but I wasn't impressed with that saw and it might have an air leak too. Uh, I didn't replace the decom valve on that saw was 0 0.017 ring gap, uh, very young. And it was just missing a, a bunch of parts on the clutch side. And I had the parts, so I added those parts after I tore the saw down. And that was the first saw Dion helped me clean. And it's also the very first Mtronic saw that I've not taken the Mtronic setup and put an old style carburetor on it without the computer because I'm intimidated by them simply. And that, and I'm like, simply a, a, a computer on a carburetor. Why don't you just learn how to tune your car? But I'm like, shit. Uh, I have to tune carbs for so much time of my day sometimes breaking in saws and I'm like fuck if a computer can do it for me I guess I could let it uh, that being said neighbors so what do we say at the end of every video on this channel if you're new listen if you're not new you better say it damn it headphones on wife sleeping next to you headphones on husband sleeping next to you uh, young children if you're here by any chance everybody say it because Everybody, all 8 billion of you fucking neighbors need to be following this concept. Be kind to one another. Why? Everyone is facing battles. And there's a t-shirt somebody stole my saying and elaborated on it. Battle. Everyone is facing a battle you know nothing about. The problem with that t-shirt is... Everyone should be facing battles that we all know everything about because we have to share our burdens together and we have to face the battles together. Let's stop fucking doing this alone like it's just me and my household. No, nah, neighbors, come on. Your family does you dirty. Don't disown them. Let them keep doing you dirty and fucking be nice to them and gently tell them how their character's fucked up. Okay, and try and help them change and don't say they're never going to change because when everybody goes around saying a human being is never going to change that human being's going to be like nobody fucking has faith in me changing anyways. So fuck all of y'all. You don't believe me if I am good. So I'm just going to be bad. You see what happened there? So then they're shitty and they make more shittiness and then everything's shitty and everybody's shitty and we keep being shitty and everything just keeps getting shittier. Stop neighbors. Extend trust. Be honest. Help your neighbor even if they don't deserve it. Okay. If you know somebody's wasting their money on drugs and their lots are going to get shut off, go pay their lot bill. Are you enabling them? You're going to say probably. Most of you will say you're enabling them. And you might be. But at the same time, don't let humans go without food, water, and basic necessities just because they have demons that are different than your demons. You all have fucking demons. You atheist, uh, I'm sorry, we're not stardust. Uh, you Christians... You all have fucking demons. So many Christians try to, oh, I don't have, I'm not possessed by a demon. You're, why would you say something like that? No, there are demons that surround you and you're possessed with demons. If you believe the Bible, that's the reality of it. Neighbors that are agnostic and just believe in a higher power, you have demons. Okay, we all do. And so the only way we defeat the demons is if we stop fucking fighting alone. 
Church, wake up, God damn it. You guys are the worst offenders. You're the largest reason the world's shitty. Because you're a corporation collecting money, taking advantage of people, giving them a fake false hope. If Jesus is real, you're not teaching the right Jesus. <laughs> if that's what you're doing every Sunday, wake the fuck up. Stop going to church and open your Bible and read it for yourself in your closet. By in your closet, I mean in your private space, in your quiet time, in the woods, whatever, whatever it is, okay? Jeremiah 23, woe to the pastors who lead my flock astray. Neighbors, don't get led astray. That's it. Love all 8 billion of you, even though I fucking suck at it. Uh, I have to keep double working saw after saw after saw after saw after saw and triple working saw after saw after saw. We're trying to get to a point that we don't have to do that. Thank you for all of your support as I struggle with my life. I fucking love you, neighbors. I could not do this without you. Without this channel, without all of you out there, all 600 of you that are on this channel so far, there's no way without your support I would be able to keep persevering like I am. So please keep it up. We got perks coming. We got memberships coming. Please, please. I have set a low membership. I don't see any reason if somebody has a job, they cannot afford to support this channel by, by having a $4 a month membership and purchasing perks. $4 a month is when I set the low membership at. And then I'll have a level two that's only $7.99 a month. We will have that very soon. It might be established by the time you watch this video. Because it's so long and on the phone, I gotta stop talking. That's it, neighbors. Let's get to work and keep persevering, damn it.